What's up, family? I hope you're doing great. It's Pastor Adam here coming at you from my office on this Big Give Sunday. Happy Big Give Sunday. This is one of my favorite Sundays of the entire year uh, where we take up one big offering and we give it all away to some amazing, amazing causes. And we've got we've got some amazing causes this year. So um, as you know, we've been in this teaching series where uh, we've been posturing our hearts to, to expect an encounter with Emmanuel. As you know, the word Emmanuel means God with us. And in the season of Advent, we are fostering the, the longing for the appearing, which is what the word Advent means, of, of Emmanuel, for, for God to be made manifest in us and with us. And so to experience that, we're, we're looking back at how, how different people experienced an encounter with, with Jesus, as, um, as the birth narratives talk about. And uh, we're going to be offering some experiences with Jesus as this experience gets going. And we're going to be uh, taking up this big offering so that other people can experience the grace and mercy of Jesus too. So uh, as we dive into this Big Give Sunday, I want you to join me if you have a Bible in the Gospel of Luke chapter 1. I'm going to be reading from verses 5 to 25 and then we'll skip and go to verses 57 to 79. So let's read. I'm going to pray and then God is going to speak to us in his holy word. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah in the the division of Abijah. And he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and statutes of the Lord. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. Now, while he was serving as priest before God when his division was on duty, according to the custom of the priesthood, he was chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. And your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great before the Lord. And he must not drink strong drink or wine, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. And Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel answered him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. And behold, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day that these things take place, because you did not believe my words which would be fulfilled in their time. And the people were waiting for Zechariah, and they were wondering at his delay in the temple. And when he came out, he was unable to speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the temple. And he kept making signs to them and remained mute. And when his time of service was ended, he went to his home. After these days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she kept herself hidden, saying, Thus the Lord has done for me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach from among people. Now, let's jump over to verse 57. Now, at the time for Elizabeth to give birth, she bore a son. And her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. And on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child. And they would have called him Zechariah after his father, but his mother answered, No, he should be called John. And they said to her, None of your relatives is called by that name. And they made signs to his father, inquiring what he wanted him to be called. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And they all wondered. And immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue loosed, and he spoke, blessing God. And fear came on all their neighbors. And all these things were talked about through all the hill country of Judea. And all who heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What then will this child be? For the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord, God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and he has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, 
to show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high, to give light to those who sit in darkness, and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and became strong in the spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day of his public appearance to Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Father, help us as we study. Help us to see how you love us and you want to give something big to us and through us for the fame and glory of your son, Jesus. So help us, give us faith that this might all happen. In Christ's name, amen. Well, it's Big Gift Sunday, as you've heard now many times, and this is one of my favorite Sundays all year because over the years, your generosity and God's magnificent power has enabled us to give away hundreds of thousands of dollars to church plants and medical debt relief and local social responsibility initiatives. And uh, just as as the lead pastor around here, it's such an exciting thing to get to represent and to be a part of. And um, and so today, I want to show you from this text that we read about Zechariah and Elizabeth and the and the uh, birth of of John the baptizer, how God wishes to give something to us and through us, but that something is going to require faith of us. You see, here in the book of Luke, we've got a ton of things going on that unfortunately we, we don't have uh, time to all unpack today, but Luke begins his gospel by, by intentionally bringing our eyes to things just before Jesus. Luke, Luke is the investigator. He is the um, is the reporter who, who sourced out all this stuff. And so Luke would have sat with the people who heard this and maybe some of the people who were there when, um, when John was born and would have gotten a lot of this stuff firsthand and heard the exciting story of all that God had given to Zechariah and Elizabeth and through them for the sake of the world. And, and that theme, that idea is what we want to focus on today. Because as I said earlier, I believe that God wants to give something big to you and through you, but, but it's going to require faith of you. So here in the text, we see that, that God wanted to give something amazing to Zechariah. Now, when we meet Zechariah, he's old, he's advanced in years, and, and we're told that he and his wife, Elizabeth, are righteous. Now, this is a really big deal because that's an adjective that the Bible gives to very few people. But Zechariah and his wife, they're righteous. They've been blameless in the ways of the Lord. They've been waiting patiently and faithfully for God to do something amazing in them. But they have this pain point. You see, when all their friends were getting pregnant, nothing was happening. And when all their, their friends' babies were growing up, nothing was happening. And when all their friends' babies were hitting adolescence, nothing was happening. And, and maybe even now they're at the years where their friends' children are beginning to think about having their own children and still they remain childless. You see, in, in this point in history and in this culture, to not have a child was more than shameful. It was it was a lack of security. It was who's going to take care of you when you're older. At, at this point, children were um, a sign that God was with you and that God wanted to take care of you and that you were going to be secure in your old age because someone else was going to be able to, to care for you and maybe you were, were not able to care for yourself. And so here, in this, in this strange and ironic twist of fate, Zechariah is a priest He's serving in the house of God. He's supposed to embody faithfulness and trust in God. And yet... It seems that to him, maybe God hasn't come through for him. Maybe you've been there. Maybe, maybe you are the kind of person that's been, you know, doing your best and you've been showing up to church or church online or you've been giving or you've been, been reading your Bible, but, but it just feels like maybe that, that thing that you were really holding out hope for hasn't quite shown up. Well, well, I believe today that God wants to give big to you and through you. And so let's see what God wanted to give to Zechariah. You see, we read down here in, in verse um, 8, that while he was serving as a priest um, and his division was on duty, he was chosen to go into the temple and burn incense. This would have been the honor of his life, okay? This would have been like the high point of his entire career. And so he finally gets to go in to the holy place and, and burn incense before the Lord. That doesn't sound like a big deal to us because we can just kind of show up to church environments, uh, at least when we're not on lockdown, and and that's something we're free to do. But, but for them, a priest could only enter into that special space um, once a year, and, and who got to do it was, was a really high honor. 
And so it was his turn, and this, this was going to be his moment to really encounter God. And boy, did God have something that he wanted to give to Zechariah. God shows up in the words of the angel Gabriel, and, and God wants to give him a bunch of things. In, in verse 13, we read that God wants to give him a son. Uh, and in verse 14, it says that that son will bring him joy and gladness. So not only, Zechariah, am I going to give you a son? I'm going to give you joy. I'm going to heal you emotionally. And uh, we learn in verse 15 that he's going to be a great and godly son, and he's going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then, uh, and then in verses 16 to 17, we read that, that this son is actually going to be used to turn the hearts of fathers back to um, their, their God and the hearts of sons back to their fathers, that, that this this collective hope in um, in all of Israel that uh, that had been lingering and waiting and wanting to be fulfilled, God was going to do right now, and He was going to do it through the giving of something great and big and huge to Zechariah. God wanted to give something big to Zechariah, to him and, and through him, because you see, if you're Zechariah, you've probably been been praying for two things. You've one been praying for for a kid, and the other thing you've been praying for is is for for Israel to be healed and consoled. You see, this moment doesn't just happen in a vacuum. This is um, this is during a period of history uh, called um, Second Temple Judaism, or or the moment where um, they're the people of God are under the oppressive boot of Rome. And it's not the first temple which was destroyed. This is the second temple, but its glory is nothing like the first temple. And and there's this longing in the people of Israel, especially if you read what they wrote at the time and and kind of what people were talking about. There's this longing for when is God going to come and do something amazing? When is he going to come and console Israel? And and Zechariah would have had these twin hopes that, that Israel would have been made right and restored and that God would give him a son. And, and here comes God to give him both of those things but in a way he doesn't expect. You see, God wanted to give something to Zechariah and through him, but that was going to require faith of him. And that's where the story takes a little bit of a dip. You see, for Zechariah, this place where God wanted to actualize his promise was the place of Zechariah's deepest pain. You know, God's like this. He, he doesn't just want to bless us, and he doesn't just want to bless you. He doesn't just want to give big to Adam or to you or to our church or to Zechariah. He wants to give big to us and through us. But very often, because God's always working a trillion angles, he wants to do that by means of your own healing and by, by expanding your faith and my faith to receive what he wants to give, even what he wants to give big to us and through us. And that's what happened to Zechariah. So here comes this angel, Gabriel, he's saying, look, everything you've been praying for is about to come to pass. And Zechariah's like, great, but how am I going to know? Can you imagine being Gabriel and being like, how are you going to know? Like, fool, I am Gabriel. Like, I've stood in the presence of God. We're in the Holy of Holies right now. And you're going to, you want me to footnote this? You want me to give you some lines of evidence? Here's your line of evidence. You don't get to talk until your child comes. Now, maybe if this was like a normal marriage, Elizabeth was like, this is the greatest gift ever. But for Zechariah, a, a priest, one who was supposed to teach the law of God and embody the presence of God, th this was this was harsh. God wanted to do something to heal Zechariah's place of pain. And it required Zechariah to have faith, to trust God. But very often, our pain gets in the way of our trust, doesn't it? I don't know about for, for you, but for me, those places in my soul that are hurt from my past or challenges or places of, of brokenness or maybe a little uh, difficulty or disappointment, when God asks me to trust him in those areas, I find it very, very hard sometimes. And maybe you do too. But friend, God wants to give something big to you and through you, but it's going to require faith from you. And that faith very often is going to be for healing in that, that spot of pain. Because in the case of Zechariah, it was the locus of his pain that the promise was to be fulfilled. And so, God finally did this thing. He gave Zechariah a child. Let's read in the text. We read here in verse 57 that the time came for Elizabeth to give birth and she bore a son. And after the son was born, everyone's coming around because they're like, man, God gave Elizabeth a son. This is, this is a big deal. Now, now today, we put that up on Facebook maybe, like after the event was over. But we're talking about a time when, you know, you couldn't be in the, the screaming pain of childbirth and your neighbor's not here, okay? So, so the whole neighborhood is coming around and they're saying, wow, look at what God has done. This couple in their old age, doesn't it remind you of Abraham and Sarah? Doesn't it remind you of God's faithfulness? And they're all excited and they're all cheering. And they're like, yeah, this is probably going to be like Zach Jr., right? And Elizabeth says, no. 
Oh, his name is going to be John. And they're like, but why? <laughs> why? That's, that's not a name that we normally use. That's not a name that we would normally uh, uh, have in our, in our village. And that's not from your family. And so they asked, Dad, Dad, are you sure? And so Zechariah writes out and he says, yes, his name is to be John. And in writing, in, in affirming with his written word, the prophesied word, the spoken word of the angel Gabriel, faith happened. You see, the scriptures will say later in the book of Romans that, that um, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And that if we confess with our mouths and believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead, we'll be saved. There's something powerful about the confession of your mouth, the, the agreement, the coming into alignment verbally with God's word. And so when Zechariah did that, there was a coming into alignment with God's promise through his angel and there was healing. And not only was there healing, his, his tongue was loosed, but then he breaks out into this massive prophetic word. The Spirit of God shows up and comes upon Zechariah, and he begins to prophesy all kinds of amazing things to his son, over his son John. And he says things like, look, blessed be God. God has raised up this amazing son. And then I love this. He says, and you, my child, in verse 76, will be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will prepare before the Lord his ways to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God. You see, God wanted to give something big to and through Zechariah. And it required faith from Zechariah. And, and a, when, when God's promise to give big was combined with Zechariah's faith, not only was he healed, but that place of pain became a place of praise and a place of provision. And, and Zechariah's prophesying over his son, God is going to do this because he is tender. And he's merciful. In that, in that healing of that wound, Zechariah got to experience the tender mercies of God. I believe that what God wants us to hear from this passage today is that he, his heart's desire for you, his heart's desire for Aletheia Church, his heart's desire for his people is to give big, not, not skimpy, not small, big to you and through you. But that's going to require faith from you. Now, now, there's great news about this because Zechariah was looking forward through a, a glass dimly to something that, that he could not yet see. But now we look back here in the season of Advent to, through the scriptures to something we can see clearly. You see, Zechariah's son was empowered by the Holy Spirit to make a way before the Lord. And, and we know by the very next coming chapters that that, that way making was for, for Jesus. It would be this son, John, who would baptize Jesus and who would, who would decrease before Jesus, who would give his life for the testimony of Jesus, who would call out Jesus as the Lamb of God, the salvation of the world. And so this whole story points us to its fulfillment. The big gift that God wanted to give Zechariah and Elizabeth and even John that required their faith was the gift of Messiah, the gift of not only the consolation of Israel, but through Israel, the consolation and healing of the whole world world, the gift of Jesus. This encounter with Emmanuel, with God, with us. That's God's big gift that he wants to give to you and through you, but it's going to require faith from you. So here on Big Gift Sunday, what, what does this mean? Well, I believe that God wants to give something to you. Now, Maybe for you it's healing, like Zechariah and Elizabeth. It's, there's this hurt place in, in your emotions that, that God wants you to trust him with, that in Jesus' name, that he, he wants to heal and redeem and restore. And I want to encourage you right now in the chat, there are people who would love to pray with you, who would love to stand with you and walk out that healing with you. Now, maybe maybe it's something like like financial. Maybe, maybe you're like, okay, but but I, I've got this, this need. Like, I can't make rent. I'm, you know, the economy because of COVID has broken down. Okay. God wants to bless you, but as is common to say in the church of Jesus Christ, we're blessed to be a blessing. God wants to give big to you and through you, but it's going to require faith from you. And again, if you have any needs at all, please let us know, because you know we believe that we want to be a generous church, not just to the world out there, but to the people of God here in our spiritual family. So let us know in the chat what, what those needs are. But, but the big need is, of course, the, the gift of salvation. God wants to give you the, the gift of a relationship with Jesus. He wants to give that big cosmic gift to you and through you. Some of you have been followers of Christ for a very long time, but you've not yet allowed the gift of Jesus to come through you. You've, you've kept the news, but you haven't given the news. And that's going to require faith 
from you. Maybe today is the day where you realize, I've got to trust God like Zechariah finally came around to doing and have my confession of Jesus come into alignment with God's word so that other people can know. Just like the whole village came to look at this amazing miracle, maybe people want to come and look at your life and see what Jesus has done through you and, and to you so that they might know him too. But, but here on Big Give Sunday, we just don't want to only think about what God wants to give to us. We want to think about what God wants to give through us. As I said, we're blessed to be a blessing. And, and here on Big Give Sunday, we, we look back not only at the way God has blessed us and, and allowed our church to see so many people meet Jesus and added into spiritual family and other churches planted, but in addition, the hundreds of thousands of dollars that this Big Give offering that we're taking up today has gone to, uh, to, to take care of the, these needs that have been met. And so, in order to participate with this, it's going to require faith. Now, I know it's Christmas season and uh, tis the season to run up the credit card and buy gifts we can't afford for people that we don't really like. Um, may I encourage you, uh, since 2020 has changed all of our patterns, let, let, let's change that pattern too. I instead, what, what if we allowed the cosmic gift of Jesus Christ that has been given to us to be received with glad and thankful and humble hearts by faith and and if we allow the good news of the gospel to come out through us, through this big give offering. Now, this year, we're, we're giving to some amazing, amazing um, ends and opportunities. Uh, here locally, we're partnering with two organizations. The first is the Black Ministerial Alliance of Greater Boston. Uh, this year, Alethea will be partnering with this organization uh, in the work they're already doing to support communities of color and at-risk communities in the Greater Boston area. And this is particularly important given the ways COVID-19 has disproportionately affected communities of color. And so we're excited to come alongside our brothers and sisters in Christ in this way. In addition, we're partnering with another local organization called Fostering the Hope. Now, Many of you in our community have already uh, been um, served by and serve with this organization because many in our community are embracing this uh, amazing stewardship and amazing blessing of being uh, foster families. Fostering Hope uh, empowers churches and individuals to care for children and families impacted by the foster care system, serving as trusted partners and meeting needs. And so we're really excited to come alongside that organization that's doing all they're doing in Jesus' name. So those are our two local organizations. Then we're excited to give big to, um, to, to something here in, in the United States, namely a church plant that, uh, that I got to be um, a part of for the, for the training of this particular uh, church planter and his wife. This year, we're, our, we're excited to partner with Every Nation Church of downtown LA. Now, this is a new church plant pastored by um, Pastor Kenny and his wife, uh, Tanya. Uh, and and I'm, I'm excited because, because um, I, I've gotten to know them a little bit. I've gotten to teach in our church planters boot camp and the grace and gift on on their life is huge and they're going to be a massive blessing to the area that they're going and they're already walking in so much favor he was basically given a uh, um a, a chaplaincy at yeah, at the um at the university there and, and they've got space i mean people are just falling over themselves to give this couple um, a place for their for their church plant and we're excited to come alongside them financially and in our faith and then finally, uh, globally, we are excited to once again be partnering with the Orphan Network. Orphan Network is a local church-based relief ministry that's feeding hundreds and hundreds of kids and taking care of their medical needs and giving them the gospel all through the local church in Nicaragua. And, um, and we're, we're honored and privileged to be a part of what God is doing there. So, as I said, God wants to give big to you and through you, but this is, this is going to require faith of you. So, right now, in, in the chat, and... Um, and as you've already heard, there's an opportunity to participate with this big give offering. Now, the scriptures say that God loves cheerful givers, not, not to give reluctantly or under compulsion. So if today as you're watching, you feel manipulated or you're like, I don't want to do that, don't. don't. Don't feel any pressure. But if today there's a spark of hope, if today there's a spark of faith, and a spark of gratitude for what God has given to you in Christ, as we think about that this Advent season, and as we think about the way God gave to Zechariah, then I want to encourage you, to stand in faith, to give what you've decided in your own heart to give, and trust with me and with our church leadership that God is going to multiply our giving and do something amazing through these four outstanding ministry opportunities. So I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to bless you. Father, thank you for this offering. Thank you for all that you gave to Zechariah and through Zechariah and Elizabeth. Thank you, God, that we get to look back on their faith and their journey, and we get to be inspired to trust you for how you want to heal our places of pain and how you want to do something big 
to us and through us for the sake of your son, Jesus. Lord, I pray for my friends that they would know Christ and that through their faith, many others would be blessed and know him too. In Jesus' name, I bless these men and women. Amen. Thank you so much for your giving to The Big Give this year.